Welcome to the hot sauce. This is Angel Pennells, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I'm currently at 227 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250 by the end of the year. So please help a brother out and like, comment, and subscribe. You can also catch this, previous, and future episodes on your favorite podcasting platform. Let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Katie Dodd, a registered dietitian nutritionist that resides in Medford, Oregon. All right. All right. Well, welcome back to the hot sauce. Today we have a, a good friend of mine and a special guest, uh, Katie Dodd. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put her in the hot seat here. So she is now in the hot seat. Um, <laughs> and what I'd like for you to do to kick us off is why don't you give us an introduction on who you are and where you went to school, where you went for your internship, what jobs you've done, and we'll just go from there. So please take it away. Sure. So, hi, I'm so glad to be on your podcast, Angel, and it's so good to see you as usual. I am Katie Dodd, and I've been a dietitian for 14 and a half years now. Thinking way back in the day when I first got in this profession, I went to undergrad at California State University, Chico, and then went out to Southern Illinois University, Carbondale for my master's and my internship. Now, out of school, I got my very first job ever, which I was at for... 13 years, 14 years. How long was I at the VA? I worked um, in home-based primary care at the VA where I met you. And I worked there for the majority of my career in the same job and then eventually hop ship and became a full-time entrepreneur. And I've been a full-time entrepreneur for almost a year and a half now. So that's really the quick who I am and what I've done. I live in Oregon. I'm a mom to two awesome kiddos and yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, appreciate that. So <clears throat> since you were or where I got to meet you was in VA home care, could you give us a little bit of an uh, explanation of how your experience was doing home care? Yes, I loved working at the VA. I, I didn't leave the VA because I didn't like the work. I left because I loved entrepreneurship so much more. That is why I ultimately left and I wanted to be home more with my kiddos. But home care was a job I actually... I didn't even know it existed. Um, I know when both you and I, Angel, we started around the same time at the VA and yes. back then home-based primary care was very new and it had just started being implemented across the country. So when I actually applied at the VA, I didn't apply for a home care job. I applied for what, an inpatient job and I ended up getting two interviews and got the job with home-based primary care. And I will say I loved it. It was such a cool gig because we got to work with an interdisciplinary healthcare team. So nurses, doctors, social workers, um, psychologists, like kind of like textbook healthcare, what it should be like, but you actually got to like be in it and work with this interdisciplinary team, follow people long-term and go into their homes. I think some people think going into the home is weird, but it, it's really not. Safety is key. All those things are in place to make sure it's a safe environment. But I would always describe to kids what I did is I get to go hang out with really cool grandmas and grandpas and talk to them about food. <laughs> so it's just <laughs> such a different environment being in their home versus in like a sterile white clinic because you can see what they're eating. If you're talking about sodium, you can see, you know, the, the, tub of peanuts and the bag of potato chips next to their couch and you can go into their kitchen with them and help them with cooking or help them go through and read labels with the actual foods they have in their own home you get to meet them you get to meet their pets you get to see their pictures and you get to connect with them in a whole other level and i also think what was cool about home care is that with within home-based primary care i think the average age was around 76 years so it was primarily an older adult population and many of these veterans not all of them but many of them were pretty socially isolated so for them i think it was a highlight just having them come into their home so while yes we would talk about nutrition yes we would help them with you know all of their health care needs but there was also this social work aspect of it where you just got to sit with them and hear their stories and connect with them so it was a really unique, cool job. I, I did really appreciate being able to like go out into the field, not be stuck in an office 24 seven. So, um, you know, live in beautiful Southern Oregon. So I got to drive all over beautiful Southern Oregon, go hang out with awesome veterans in their home, help mm -hmm. them to improve their nutrition, their quality of life, their health. And um, yeah, I, I really, really liked working home care. I, I always tell people if you're looking at getting a traditional job, I'm 
I'm a big fan of the VA. I think every VA is a little bit different. They're all, you know, all across the country. My VA was in Southern Oregon, top notch. <laughs> and even just the, the system of how you can connect with other dietitians is really amazing. It's kind of like we have the big academy within dietetics. I feel like the VA has like their own internal system where you have like this um, volunteers and all these specialty groups and, you know, continuing education calls and the way you can connect with people. And, and this is how I, I met, I met you, Angel, is that we were yes. able to message each other and you weren't working in a silo. You didn't have to reinvent the wheel. You'd find someone else doing the same job as you at another VA and be like, Hey, you got any templates? You got any this? Hey, how do I do this? And it's just a wonderful way to connect with them. So I feel like even though I worked in Southern Oregon, I had all of these dietitian friends all across the country who, um, you know, could help me in what I was doing. So it was definitely a rewarding job. It paid really good. By the time I left, I was making six figures as a dietitian. I didn't supervise any humans and I didn't manage any projects at the end. So that I know that's pretty rare in the dietetics world. So it was a good place to work. Amazing mission, serving veterans, good pay, good benefits, pension, all the good things. So when it comes to traditional jobs, it was definitely a, a good job to have. I can't say no more. That was pretty good. Yeah, and I know. Yeah, yeah and, and, you know, Angel and I, we actually presented at FINCI, um, the Food Nutrition Conference and Expo in Washington, D.C., and we talked all about home care. So we could talk about home care probably for a whole episode because, you know, we were yes. in it, we did it, yeah. and we see the value of it. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no, no. I think uh, where we got together, um, my former boss put together a national group for home care and we talked about yeah. templates and MNT and all these things. And that's how, that's how we met. And then did you go to San Diego? When was the first time I yes. met you? We it met in Diego. real life, San Diego, Fincy. That was San the first Diego. time yes. we went to Fincy yes. and we were both volunteering yeah. at the VA booth. And yes. so at that yes. time the VA had a booth on the expo and that's when we first met each other. See, there you go. Kind of amazing. Yeah. That was uh, 2011. Yeah. And here we are. <laughs> Here we are 12 years later. <laughs> Crazy. So, awesome. 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 <laughs> well, thank you for sharing your, your journey and talking about the VA. Um, definitely near and dear to my heart and, and a great period for me as well. 11 great years of doing home care. Loved it. Loved every second yeah. of it. Um, so since you talked about getting into entrepreneurship, can you talk about what your current setup is now, what you're doing now? Sure, sure. So I'll kind of start with kind of where things shifted for me. So I, I think, uh, Angel, one of the ways that we really connected was we like to volunteer a lot. Like, I think both of us kind of have volunteer problems. <laughs> We're like, if you ask all the hats we wear... <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to. For a while, we, we definitely had a problem. We, we were like, you know, wearing 10 hats at once. But um, I, I'd always had volunteered within the academy. And I loved volunteering, giving back, being in the room with other people who are passionate about being a dietitian and changing the profession in meaningful ways. I loved it. And that is actually what got me to Fincy many times was a lot of these volunteer roles I had within the academy. And I was at a um, Fincy in Texas. Was it? Where, where was it in Texas? I'm, I'm sure. Maybe Houston? Yeah, in Houston. Yeah. So it was the one in Houston. And when I was there, I ended up, well, actually not there. On the way back, I happened to sit next to a dietitian on a plane. Kind of random story. And she was at Fincy. I had met her on the expo floor. She had a continuing education company called Nutrition Dimensions that she started in the 1980s. Once the internet came around, she transitioned her business onto the internet. Then she eventually sold it. And since then, it's kind of... Um, kind of been sold between companies and kind of, in, I think in a lot of ways, been disbanded. But when I met her, I was so excited to talk with her because she is this entrepreneur, this business owner. She had a home in Southern Oregon. She had a home in the tropics and she just had this really cool life. And so I started picking her brain and I had asked her like, can I maybe learn more about you? Maybe job shadow, maybe, um, start writing for you because I wanted to improve my own writing skills. And I knew that a lot of what she did with the continuing education was papers, writing papers. And so we ended up exchanging business cards, followed up with her a week later, and she ended up offering me my first paid gig. And I feel like this sounds a little silly, but I had been volunteering for so long. The idea of someone paying me to do stuff that I probably would have done for free was like such a foreign concept. And so essentially what I got paid for was, um, 
continuing education papers need to be updated every three years because the science changes, all the things. So I was updating these continuing education papers, and a lot of them are related to geriatrics because I am a board certified specialist in gerontological nutrition. So I got my first gig working for her and her company, and I was getting paid. So that was my first introduction to having a side hustle. So making money outside of my full-time job. And again, I would have done this for free just to learn the skill set, just to improve my writing. And, and I will say when you're writing continuing ed, you learn so much more because you're thinking of it in a different way. It's not like you're just reading it, but you have to do the research and it's, it's just a lot of fun. But right. after that process, I'm like, well, who else will pay me money? This is pretty cool. <laughs> So I started looking for other opportunities for paid gigs. I started doing webinars with a company called Dietitian Central. I um, started doing all kinds of just different random gigs where I was getting paid. It was a blessing because when I had my daughter, Emily, the VA lets you take four months off for maternity leave, but it's unpaid. And so trying to figure out how am I going to be able to afford to stay home with my daughter for four months for maternity leave, having a side hustle was such a blessing because it gave me the money that I needed to stay home for as long as I did. So I'm bringing you on the whole journey, Angel. <laughs> so, so from there, <laughs> so from there I was side hustling. I was doing work for other people. Um, I was having a lot of fun. I was making extra money. It was a real blessing for my life. And then in 2019, um, we were at the Oregon, Washington conference, the nutrition conference. And you were there, Angel, as well. And yes, it was yes. at that conference, I heard three entrepreneurial dietitians speak. And when I was listening to them talk, it was just something in me shifted and changed because I realized I was an entrepreneur. Before then, I never self-identified as an entrepreneur. I thought an entrepreneur worked with patients. And I was like, I work with patients in the VA. I have zero interest in working with patients outside the VA. And I didn't even think of what I was doing as being entrepreneurial. And so I remember at that meeting, uh, I was actually, my dad came with me and we were in the train going up to the Space Needle. And this was after the, um, the conference. And I remember sitting there on the train, just starting to dream and scheme of like, I'm going to start a business. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to start a business. I think I came up with the name KD Nutrition because my initials are KD and KD kind of sounds like KD. So anyways, it turns out that name was taken, but it, that was like the pivotal yeah. <laughs> moment for me that everything shifted. So okay. a little bit later, I ended up falling into the world of blogging. Blogging was so cool to me because I didn't realize, A, you could make money blogging, um, <laughs> B, that blogging was anything outside a hobby where you're just journaling about what you're doing or what you're eating and your mom reads it, your dad reads it, your neighbor reads it. I didn't realize this was a <laughs> legit way <laughs> that you could right, make right, money right. and you didn't have to work with humans. <laughs> so I was like, yes, sign me up. I ended up taking an online course and I learned how to become a blogger. I published my first blog, The Geriatric Dietitian, because I was a geriatric dietitian. It's what I'm passionate about. And I published that blog on my birthday, June 29th of 2019. So from there, that's kind of a, a big point where the game changed, where I was a side hustler. I was doing work for other people, but now I was starting to create my own brand, my own business mm -hmm. that would make me more money eventually. Blogging is a long-term game. I could talk forever about that, but but it was something I knew would eventually make money. A few months later, I, you know, I worked with dietetic interns at the VA and doing home care. We'd be in the car for, you know, <laughs> drives to see patient and patient. And as I started learning more about entrepreneurship, I started telling these interns about all this cool stuff they could do as a dietitian. And I just noticed every time I would share this with them, they'd be excited. I'd be excited. And I eventually decided to create a podcast called Dietitian Side Hustle just because I wanted to tell like dietitians artists to be about all these cool things we could do outside of a full-time job, make money, impact, have fun. So I started this podcast as a hobby. It was in um, fall of 2019. I will say I never thought I would make money through it. I never intended for that to be its own business. It was just something that was fun to share. I mean, you're a podcaster a too. Outlet. It's a creative yes, outlet. Creative outlet. Yes. Yes. So from there, my website traffic continued to grow. I started creating products to sell on my website. Just kind of a real quick sneak peek how a website makes money. You bring lots of people into your world and then you have products you sell. From So for me, I sell digital handouts, eBooks. I have a course. I have what's called Amazon affiliate links. So if someone buys through my Amazon link, which has full disclosure, um, I'll make a tiny commission. But then the bread and butter of where blogs make money is through ad revenue. 
So it takes, it took me about 17, 18 months for my website to qualify for ad revenue. Um, you work with, it's like a third party ad network. And I, again, there's a lot of details behind that, but essentially about 17, 18 months in, I hit ad revenue and suddenly my blog started making good money, like thousands of dollars in passive income every single month. And from there, I'm like, I feel like every step of my journey has been, I find something cool and I'm like, I got to tell everyone else about this. I find something cool. I want to tell everyone else about it. So I ended up creating a program called blogging accelerator program. And this was a program where I started teaching other dietitians how to build a business based on blogging, how they too can do what I've done when it comes to blogging. And, and then right after that, like very shortly after I started that program, I started having business coaches and having a business coach is what really shifted for me from more hobby work to more high level business. You know, I, I love being a dietitian in school. We learn how to treat, we learn how to be a dietitian. We don't learn business skills. And so I've been doing a lot of self-education on my own on how I can learn business skills, how I can make more impact, take my skills, my passions and use it to serve more people. So I ended up starting working with a business coach and I keep saying, and that's what changed the game, but that's what I, maybe it's not changed the game. That's what increased the it level of the game. It brings you to another level. It brings you to yeah. another level, right? Yeah. So another level. So I was working with a business coach for a while. This whole time, I'm still working at the VA. I'm still working full time at the VA, but I'm doing all this stuff I'm so passionate about. And what was cool about the brand that I was building before when I was working a side hustle, I was trading time for money, meaning I got a contract. I would fulfill that contract. I would get paid one and done with my brand. I would create things, but because I was the business owner, I would continue to make that money. And because I was a blogger and a lot of blogging is passive income, it's just recurring income that comes in every single month. I was making so much more money for the time I was putting in. So I stopped working for other people, just started working for myself. And I eventually built a six figure side hustle. So my, my side hustle is making more money than the VA. <laughs> it's doing great. I'm having fun. Um, at the time, because you know, you and I, we, we've talked about this, how I think at one time, both of us thought we were career VA dietitians. Like we had these plans. We we're going to work there forever. You know, I, I think both of us didn't anticipate the direction <laughs> our careers yeah. and lives would go, but yeah. all good things. Yeah. So, um, I remember in June, 2021, this was after, well, we we're still kind of in pandemic, but this was the first live event I'd been at since everything shut down. My business right. coach, his Greg, his name is Greg Todd. He's a physical therapist. His brand is Smart Success Healthcare. He did this event in June 2021 called Smart Success Healthcare Live. Now, at this event, he presented an offer for a big mastermind. Until then, I was doing like these 90 day little masterminds. So he presented this offer for a year long mastermind, and it was $30,000. And I remember thinking, like, holy crap, that's a lot of money. I can't possibly do that, but I knew I needed to. So I joined, um, had massive anxiety for a week. Like, what did I do? But even when I joined, even when I invested, I still, at that point, I was like, okay, I'll lead the VA eventually, maybe in like three years. And then once I joined, I'm like, okay, maybe I'll be crazy and I'll leave in a year. I ended up leaving six months later. <laughs> so the, the beauty of being in a mastermind, having a business coach, they're going to guide you in the right direction of how to make decisions, how to have big picture, how to work through all the mindset stuff that holds us back. But then also when you're in the room with other people who are doing amazing things, it's like you all rise together. The mm -hmm. first time with, with this mastermind, we meet in person quarterly. And so the first time we met in person, we always had an ask. And my ask was, how can I continue to serve and help dietitians better? Particularly with my program where I help dietitians blog. And I remember everyone in the mastermind said, Katie, you got to quit your job. And I remember saying like, I did not ask that. <laughs> that was not my, my question. And I started listing all these reasons I couldn't possibly leave the VA. I was making good money. I had good health care insurance. I had a pension, like all of these reasons I thought I couldn't leave the VA. But what I loved about being in that group is each and every one of them were able to lovingly remove all those limiting beliefs that I had in my head. So I didn't say it out loud to them, but in my head, I told myself that day, 2021 is going to be the last year I ever work at the VA. Now we had three months left. 
<laughs> until the end of the year. And I had no idea how this was going to happen, but I was in Orlando, Florida to get back to Southern Oregon. It takes two flights. And so I had lots of time in the plane, a little bit of a layover. And I started dreaming and scheming and making a plan on what would this look like? So for me, it was a matter of, let me pay down a couple debts. Let me save up a little bit of a buffer. So if I dive into full-time entrepreneurship and I totally fail, I've got about six months until we got a problem. And then I created a plan on like, realistically, what do I need to be doing to make the money yeah. that I need to pay for my own healthcare insurance to, you know, to do all those things I need to be to, uh, a full-time entrepreneur. So made the plan. And then um, the beginning of December turned in my, I gave a one month notice for the VA. I wore lots of hats in the VA. So I wanted to make sure I was able to transition everything. And my last day ever at the VA was December 29th, 2021. <laughs> so it was very surreal because I thought that I was going to work at the VA till I was 60 eight and a half years old, retire with my pension. And I had this very clear plan, but then the things changed for me, but it was such a blessing because I am a mom. And, um, and, and even before this angel, we were talking about how big our kids are getting and how fast it goes. And oh, I just yeah. <laughs> became so aware of like these little humans, they're only in our home for such a short season. It feels like it's going to be long, but when you're in it, you blink and they're like, my son's almost as big as me. And I'm a big human. So right. I wanted to be more present with my kids. I, I wanted to help more dietitians because that's a lot of what I do in my brand is I help other dietitians. But I also wanted to be more present with my kids and be home with them. And that's what full-time entrepreneurship has given me. That is what taking all of these skills I think I learned from volunteering, from taking online courses, from working with a business coach, um, from doing the thing, having success and showing other people how to do it quicker. <laughs> with less frustration and, you know, just essentially fast track what I was able to do. It's been an amazing joy, but then also such a blessing because I'm able to be home with my kids. Um, I don't have them in after school program anymore. They, you know, they come, they take the bus straight home and they're with me over summer. Um, last, last summer, they're always in summer school program, but I was able to keep them home with me. And we, I think the best thing about summer school is like field trips. So we did this thing where every Wednesday we would go do like field trips. So <laughs> every Wednesday we just went on these fun, amazing adventures and it was the best summer and memories I know that my kids are always going to have. So I, I know that was a very long winded answer of kind of where I'm at now, but essentially uh, that, that was the journey. And so currently what I do, I guess, big picture, I am a blogger. My primary blog is the geriatric dietitian. It gets over a hundred thousand visits every month. I have a food blog called High Calorie Recipes. A lot of what I do with the geriatric dietitian is help older adults stop unintended weight loss, stop malnutrition. A lot of that's like, let's give them the calories they need. I ended up creating a food blog because I saw this as like a gap because a lot of times in clinic, if someone's losing weight, we give them this black and white handout that's been photographed too many times. They're, you know, they don't have a good appetite. <laughs> they don't feel like eating. We're like, here you go. Right, so I right, thought of right, when right. I wanted a, like a recipe, I would Google and go to a beautiful food blog. So I'm like, why don't they have that? So that's why I created this food blog. So that way they could have these beautiful recipes, beautiful food, you know, pictures of food that look delicious and will entice them to eat. So I created this food blog and, um, and I'm actually, I'm actually in the process probably today or tomorrow, I'm going to be starting my third website. Um, so I'm a blogger make money through passive income and blogging. I have my brand dietitian side hustle. I help dietitians do all kinds of things, start side hustles, do something on the side, build an additional stream of income. I have my blogging accelerator program. And then I also have a mastermind that I run called the blog boss mastermind, because for me, it has been so life changing to be part of a mastermind. I wanted to start this for other dietitians. So I feel like I do a lot of things, but it's so fun and I'm so grateful and I just love being a dietitian and that's a story. Awesome. That's, that, that's awesome, man. And no, don't trust me. I, uh, I was sitting there and I was like, all right, just keep going. This is good. This is good. If you want to share with me the links to your, um, to your websites and the blog and all that, I'll put it in the descriptions and people can definitely sure can. check it out. And I'm sure people will reach out afterwards. Cause no, it's been very enlightening to hear. And I think what you can see, through the cameras um for those that are watching on youtube you can see the joy in your face as you're talking about it because i know exactly you know as you've gone through the va i've had the similar experience we're going to be a va lifer <laughs> i think we like you mentioned we all yeah. started at the same time we'll be here for life and then life works in mysterious ways but hey it's all good so no so thank you for sharing appreciate that yeah 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's been so, fun because you've kind of seen my whole journey. You've, you've been there the whole yes. time to see how, yeah. Well, I think one of the things that's interesting is your all the little volunteering things and things that you've done along the way have, have given you skills and benefits to yes. keep going further, which some people may not understand or appreciate. So I will have a thing that kind of focuses on volunteering because I think it's been a big benefit to a lot of people that do it. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I still volunteer. All right. No, me too. Me too. Me too. But it's one <laughs> of these. Less than before, but got... still a lot. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is if you don't give up a space and someone else can't step up. So we got to yeah. think yeah. about it like that. So. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. So next question for you. So if you could do it all over again in your career, what would you change and what would you keep the same? And I know this is an interesting question. Could you just give us this? Very, you just gave us a story. Um, any Anything that you would change or do you think your journey has been unique and so you that it's good to go? You know, I don't think, I mean, part of this is my personality, but I wouldn't change anything I've been through because I, I think, so, I mean, it's so easy to think like, oh man, I wish I would have become an entrepreneur sooner. I, you know, wish I would have been more present with my kids sooner. I wish I would have learned all these things sooner. But at the same time, I don't think I was ready. I think sometimes we need to have these life experiences, good and bad. And then when we're ready, the opportunity appears because maybe the same opportunity had it appeared five years sooner, I wouldn't have gone as far as I've gone because I just wouldn't have been ready yet. So I think that's some of my, my personality though, is that I, I don't have regrets. Um, I see how everything works together for good. Um, the only thing I feel like I would change, um, is maybe mindset stuff. I, I think there's a lot of personality traits that a lot of dietitians, myself included, um, I would say kind of struggle with when it comes to perfectionism, fear of failure, um, self-doubt. And I, I think if, if I could go back and change some of those things, it would just be to build up my confidence a little bit higher than it was. Because I feel like now, I, I always joke that business coaching is almost like therapy because there's so much personal and professional development and mindset work that like, I've never been more confident in my entire life. And, you know, some of that, I wish I could sprinkle back on younger Katie, but right. no changes. Okay. Awesome. Appreciate that answer. That's awesome. All right. So <clears throat> next question for you is what does the future hold for you? Oh, I think the future <laughs> holds lots of good things. I I've got, I'm, I always call myself a goal crusher. I like to set goals, what I call big, audacious, crazy, scary goals. And then I just go out there and I tackle them. And so some of the goals, I feel like I, I don't entirely know the path long-term. I, I think before when I was at the VA, I had this very structured, rigid, like this is what I'm going to do. Now I'm like, you know what? What I've done has turned out so much better than what I planned. So I'm just going to kind of go with the flow here. But I do know what I'm going to be doing is going to be online. It's going to be helping people. And I want to help people on a wider scale. I, I just want to be able to help as many people as I can. Um, I mentioned I'm starting a new blog this weekend. So I'll, I'm going to continue blogging, continue helping dietitians. And my ultimate goal is I do want to become a seven figure um, dietitian and really help build okay. up other dietitians who want to become entrepreneurs and, and pursue that kind of area. Okay. That's very ambitious. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. All right, so the final question for you, and I could speak with you all day. I mean, that's great. You know, we've known you for forever. It's always great to see you every time we see us. Like, oh my god. So, yeah. any words of wisdom for the next generation of dietitians and up and coming, you know, young professional students? What, what would you have to say for them? Oh goodness. So I love working with students and interns. I um, have always worked with students. I work with them in the VA. And as I transition to becoming an entrepreneur, I still work with interns <laughs> a lot. Um, but I am so excited for this new wave of dietitians because it's a whole new world. Of course, there's lots of amazing things that we can do traditionally as dietitians, you know, from clinical, food service, community, so many cool things. But the opportunities that we have in the online space is just so phenomenal and so amazing. So I think there's a couple things I would say to the next generation of dietitians and even the current generation of dietitians, because I kind of mentioned this before about the mindset piece. I think that so many dietitians are stuck with perfectionism 
not all, but most are perfectionists. And I think a lot of people, they hold themselves back and they're not confident in what they're doing. And they feel like, oh, I really want to do this thing. But well, I, I haven't been a dietitian long enough. I don't have, maybe I need to get a specialty credential. Maybe I need to X, Y, and Z. And they're just not confident. But I am in the online space. I'm in the blogging space. I'm a digital marketer is, is really what I do. And I will tell you, there are so many people online, and we all know this, but there's so many people online who are talking about nutrition, who do not have any education, who are sharing mm-hmm. incorrect information, even harmful information, and they're doing it with confidence and they're making a ton of money. So I always, I joke around sometimes with other dietitians. I'm like, you just need to have the confidence of an uncredentialed, uncredentialed nutritionist out there sharing information on social media. Like you just need their confidence because like you are a dietitian, you went to school, you did an internship, you know what you're talking about. And even if you don't, you know how to find the correct information and you can, you know, you know how to find the right information, the right resources. And how we become the expert is by doing the thing over and over and over again. So I think the the words of wisdom I would like to leave is just, you're enough. You're enough right now. You don't have to know all the answers. You don't have to be perfect. Um, I was just talking to um, Alyssa Rumsey. Um, we just I just did a podcast interview for her for my own podcast, Dietitian Side Hustle. And we we're talking a little bit about imposter syndrome among dietitians and perfectionism and fear of failure. And... I always tell dietitians in my world, done is better than perfect. That is our goal. Done is better than perfect. But what she said was a little different spin on this and I loved it. She encourages her students to do C plus B minus work. And when she said that, I got all kinds of feels in my stomach like C plus, no, (laughs) that is not acceptable. But I I love that concept of C plus B minus work, understanding that honestly, our C plus B minus is like other people's A plus. Like dietitians are amazing and we're just too hard on ourselves. So you're enough as you are. Embrace done is better than perfect. Go out there and help people because you've got everything you need to help them now. And also understanding that there's this whole other world and this online space of ways that we can make impact and help people. And and these things are often things we don't learn in school, just because I think in school we learn more traditional roles, but you can make impact blogging. You can make impact on social media on, you could be a YouTuber. You can like, there's all of these amazing things that you can do to serve and help people at really high levels and have fun doing it and also make money because there's nothing wrong with making a little money. Absolutely. No, I, I appreciate that. I could, I could elaborate, I could keep going to elaborate on that. I think uh, the one thing I'll end with is, you know, comparison is a thief of joy. And we yes. have to remember that we cannot look at other people, social media or what other people doing currently and, and kind of flip it around. And instead of being envious, you know, be like, Oh, God bless them for doing what they're doing. That's awesome. And and just keep striving for what you're doing. If anything, there's tons of opportunities out there and, and it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, you, you did the geriatric dietitian, you've done these different things and there's different angles we all can take. And I mean, I don't know. I'm just a guy just trying to have a good time. (laughs) So so, I'm just happy to be here. So no. And that's the thing is I think uh, we all, you know, there's all, um, yeah, we, I've, I've actually been a strong proponent of that as, you know, um, yeah, I, I would like make a B instead of an A, except, mm-hmm. except a lower grade. We have a type A perfectionist mentality, except a lower grade. If we wait for perfection, if I wait for the right day, I'm writing a blog post and I'm waiting for the right day. Well, there's never a right day. So you got to click never. send and then you'll, you'll eventually get better. I mean, everything we do. Uh, I'm sure the first few blogs, if you looked back on your first few blogs, you might be like, Ooh, did I really write that? And then yeah. now you're like more proficient. Um, you know, and the pot, the first podcast to now, or the first video to now, or anything we do, the first job, you know, you're two years in compared to the first day, it's like light years ahead and we progress. So, so no, absolutely. Yep. yep. And we progress by so. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate your time, Katie. Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor. It's me. 
Your greatest gift if you are watching this on YouTube is to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and share this content. If you are listening on a podcast platform, please share away. And of course, if you want to buy me a coffee, you can go to buy me a coffee and share a beverage my way. And if you want to purchase one for the guests that I just interviewed, send it my way and I will get it to that individual. Thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.